So our version of DNA is in round, with uh, the main space being both the woods where the group gathers and the field, which is feeling a spot. And it's surrounded by a street-like path where everything that happens in the outside world takes place. It was working out how can we convey these three separate spaces in kind of one set um, and kind of make it feel unified. Um, and so working with Laura, we came up with this, uh, this idea. And I've always wanted DNA to be in the, in the round because the idea of the outside world being kind of pressurised on you all the time and that people kind of, if you're in the idea of a forest, there's kind of, they could come in from anywhere. Like they could pop up from behind a tree and all these people come in all the time. Um, so we wanted that sense of like a pressure from the outside that the audience could be part of. It's kind of as much for the performers as it is for the audience as well. We played with this idea of um, blending the two worlds between the field and the woods. The wood kind of spreading into the field and the field kind of spreading into the wood. Um, one of the big kind of main things that came up with what I love was this kind of big tree concept and how exactly we were going to do that. I had no idea, but Laura's come up with this amazing tree um, which was significant of like the whole of the Adam falls in and the um, but also just the give to give you a sense of scale that they're on they're underneath something that what we see is what the community outside of the world of DNA and the, the town of DNA that they never see so it was about presenting um, them in this kind of almost underworld type of environment and changing between these two worlds. I think it's specifically why they're kind of in a, in a forest. So having that sense of scale and that idea of, of coverage was really important in terms of playing with the height of the tree and getting that in there. So loads of little initial ideas that all kind of blended into what we ended up with. And we have two keys elements, uh, which are the stumps and uh, the LED tree. The tree stumps are kind of visual cue of the natural world in which the characters evolve. They are more realistic and the tree itself is more conceptual because it has different meanings during the show. Uh, it is of course part of the forest but it's also the hall in which Adam falls and the hiding place he chooses. We use the rope lights to have this colour spreading into the surrounding areas in the carpet and in the tree stumps to evoke a kind of disease spreading from the place where the crime has taken place. So we started initially with this, this round idea um, and then it was kind of going, okay, cool, we, we can, the stumps give us a kind of more reality. Last time we had like blocks, so the world last time was a lot more conceptual in every kind of way. This time we were going, okay, let's go more naturalistic, let's, let's play with the space that we've got to create a more natural environment that actually then we can break so we can distort those worlds. But in terms of working with Laura, I kind of threw that, kind of go, let's make it more naturalistic and let's see what we come up with. Um, and then Laura came back to me with a, with a design and we started talking about um, costume actually become a big element as well because we started talking about colour and this idea that red is kind of like a theme and we, because it's a lot of the spaces in terms of when you think of the street you think of grey roads or uh, and the streets uh, well you think of the field you think of it like a light green when you think about the, field, the wood you think about like a dark green or kind of muddy brown and yellows and that kind of thing and going okay what's a color that will break through all that and that became like that red uh, that disease kind of infecting into this world we talked about okay well about the, that color if we had a corner that was a lighter green that then as it spread across the set it got darker and grimmer so actually as you get closer to the tree where the incident happens it gets darker and darker and darker as you get closer to the field where it's a lighter environment for phil and leah it gets lighter um, so that's a constant like a gradient thing that we could play with in the set the street became, because we're working in, in rep with another show, The, um, the Fall, um, they've got a very bare set but it's mostly just, just grey so we had to go work with that in tandem. So it's working with the practicalities of not just in this space but also the practicalities of where the sh what the show's uh, context is in terms of the, what we've got to be doing with the other show. Um, so we came up with this concept of we could, we could keep their grey outside and that could become our street and our road. But also practically, just in terms of like health and safety thing, you've got to leave a certain gap between 
you and the audience, there's like a second gap. We're going, okay, great. Let's just use it. Let's make use of it. Let's not use, let's not make it dead space. Let's not go, okay, it's just a fire safety thing. Let's use that environment. And we made the street kind of all around. Um, and stuff changes throughout the whole process as well. Originally, there was more stumps. We ended up losing a, losing a stump um, just because of the way we were then looking at the space in terms of blocking and stuff like that as well. Um, so such stuff constantly changes and it's a, it's a collaboration most importantly. It's both of us going, how about this, how about this, how about this, until we both arrived at this beautiful set. <laughs>